This video may not be appropriate for children of 13 and under. Parental discretion is advised. Tired of missing out on figures or paying scalper prices at toy stores? Then go ahead and visit DJC Collectibles, my sponsor. You can get 10% on anything Transformers, accumulate points, and sometimes score an exclusive figure you thought you'd miss forever. Head over to DJC Collectibles and start saving today. Oh, I forgot the hat. Hi everyone, it's Raziel Kane, and I'm you know close to the camera today so that you can get the full experience of being Raziel Kane. Hi everyone, I'm Raziel Kane. I'm back with another video, and today H&E Toys or Break or whatever, uh, you know H&E Foodie, H&E OnlyFans, yeah. He asked us to do um, top five of our favorite animated series from Transformers, so. Uh, let's roll the intro. This is how I look in the morning and the afternoon and at night, even when I'm sleeping. Number five, that's going to surprise everyone, and it's R.I.D. 2015. I did enjoy all the new take. To me, that's a very separate continuity than anything I've watched before. I know it's a sequel to Prime, but I really did enjoy the new take on the Decepticons, uh, even Grimlock. Strongarm was a very fun new character. I really enjoyed her. Uh, Bumblebee trying to take a leadership role was also really fun, so... Yeah, the animation style was cool. I really did enjoy R.I.D. 2015. Number four is Transformers Animated. Same reason as R.I.D. 2015. It was a very separate continuity, very different style. So it didn't really relate to anything I watched before. So I really didn't compare it to anything I watched before. The story was fun. The voice acting was really cool. Corey Burton as Megatron was perfect. I really enjoyed that uh, rendition. I really enjoyed uh, Bumblebee and Bulkhead, Optimus. David Kay did a great job for a younger Optimus. Even the fact that, you know, being a Magnus was more uh, prestigious than being a Prime. And then that was fun too. You know, was never done before. So I didn't mind that. As long as the show is not sold as continuation of G1 or a new rendition of G1, I'm down for it. Number three is Bumblebee Cyberverse Adventure. Cyberverse story was different. It was fun. The first season was really cool with, you know, them going inside Bumblebee's head and trying to piece things together. I thought that was different. I thought that was interesting. I enjoyed that quite a bit. Second season, you know, where you have like kind of spotlight episodes for, uh, you know, different uh, characters and you see the war between... Uh, the Decepticon and the Autobots. Uh, you see relationships that they had before. You can see character growth, evolution, why they chose to do uh, these things, why they joined each camp. I thought that was really fun. Voice acting was great. And season three was amazing. I thought it was really well done. And then the two specials, a, a really fun ride. So, yep, yeah, uh, kudos to that, uh, that crew who did that show. That was really amazing oh i like this show number two it's gonna surprise a lot of people but it's g1 yeah g1's not number one because i know that without g1 we wouldn't have all of this franchise still going on 40 years later but i prefer long story arc continuity and stuff like that and g1 did not have that it had great animation amazing voice acting uh, the, the you know the overall story you know of you know the war and everything and the lore that was added as they went uh, was great but it was always episodic so that's why G1 is not at the number one spot but um, you know most of this is G1 uh, so yeah it, it I can't deny that I love G1 it's amazing and I'm thankful that we had such a great show growing up. Have you ever gone to the bathroom and felt like you were wiping a marker? And number one, Beast Wars. Because of the overall story arc. It's not just episodic. There was some, you know, standalone episodes here and there. But most of the time, it was, you know, a continuation of the war. The whole story from episode one to the last one 
was just evolution, uh, growth, uh, you know, overcoming obstacles. Uh, sometimes you get major setbacks, but you still manage to overcome it and, you know, beat it. The Ascalon fell into the, the river, uh, the Decepticon base blew up. The Like, there was always something to force these guys to adapt and go beyond what the original parameter was. We've lost character, we gained new friends along the way. Everybody was so unique, there wasn't anything like generic grunt type characters. And really the show was probably one of the few, G the few Transformer show that wasn't really just a big toy commercial because they didn't add characters every week. They, you know, it was selective. Okay, they're coming out with this, these new toys. We're going to pick those two, three to add. Like it wasn't overwhelming. Uh, so yeah, Beast Wars, definitely my favorite uh, Transformer continuity. But I want to know what you think because everybody's going to, you know, be different. Please be respectful of my selection, but I want to know about your selection. What's your top five? Transformers, cartoons, animated, whatever. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, seeing a close-up on my face the whole time. If you did, please like, subscribe, hit the bell. Also, leave a comment. Love reading those. Keep coming back. Everyone on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care.